Hello and welcome back and this is possibly one of the coolest little storage upgrades that I have talked about on the channel for many a year. This is the Charge Disc Pro, a brand that we talked about on the channel before, but this is definitely something of interest to a lot of you. Not only is this an external storage drive that you can connect to your mobile devices, your portable devices, or just your static devices. This is also a portable 10 gig USB docking station or hub, depending on how you like to call it. This allows you to not only add a further one, two, or four terabytes of fan-assisted storage to your mobile devices, but also attach further USB connectivity, HDMI out, and it's ultimately an incredible gadget. At the size of a credit card and 11 millimeters thick, this is something of interest to me. But before we go any further, keep in mind this is a product, get ready for it, that is headed for crowdfunding. Indeed, Charge have actually launched a lot of their products from power supply devices to other storage devices and AI sunglasses over on Kickstarter. We've talked about them, a lot of their successes, and indeed their sunglasses one is still going through the works right now, and this is the latest. So keep in mind, everything I'm saying today is about a prototype that the brand has sent me. No money has changed hands, they've got no control of what I'm going to say in the video but nevertheless I'm going to say right now this is crowdfunding it's not like traditional retail so do keep that in mind but disclaimers aside this thing is sick as f in terms of how it looks and from now on allowing me to attach to my phone not only storage but connectivity there in the testing in the last week or so that I've had this device and I first saw this in person during uh, the IFA event in Berlin it was great to get hold of one uh, now the device is arriving with three different storage profiles but I think one of the earliest disappointments that you might want to know is that you can't get this device without storage you can't insert your own M.2 NVMe I've asked the brand several times and they're effectively saying that because it's a closed casing you can't just remove it without undermining the integrity of the cooling system. So you do have to get the 1, the 2, and the 4TB pre-attached. Now, pricing starts at $189 for the 1TB, $289 for the 2TB, and $469 for the 4TB. That's early access back, and it goes up by $10 to $20 uh, each tier. So keep in mind, you're not going to be able to just use this like an external enclosure, but it does have further USB connectivity to add more storage drives, something we'll talk about later on. But many of you are going to be wondering just what exactly is the difference between this charge hub and this external drive here. Realistically, any USB drive is just storage with the USB connectivity, with the profile changing depending on the USB-C that is supported. This is 10 gig USB or USB 3.2 Gen 2, so you're not going to be able to exceed more than one gigabyte per second there, but that's still going to be more than enough to not only ensure a decent amount of performance, again, your mobile device, you're probably going to have something slightly less because of the way the USB connectivity is made. But still, nonetheless, at a desktop level, you're going to have a decent amount of performance pass through, allowing it to maintain a pretty decent performance level. And we'll talk about performance as well later. Now, if you do attach this to your mobile device, the cable is already pre-attached. It's a decent high quality cable there. It's just the right length, really, to get it immediately funneled into your USB Type-C port there. And I don't think they're going to be supporting anything other than USB-C. Uh, but it doesn't stop you still charging your device. There's a USB-C power delivery there based at the back. Hopefully you can make that out between my fingers. And that USB port there uh, allows for 100 watts power out and 60 watt power in. So you're still going to be able to charge your device pretty darn well. Also keep in mind that although right now I've just attached one terabyte of storage to my mobile device, I'm not limited to that. Because on the base there, as you can see, we've got both a USB Type 2 port and a USB Type 3 port. They're allowing me to add further storage or perhaps USB peripherals. There's even an HDMI out at HDMI 2.1, which when I connected this to a desktop monitor, I was still able to browse my phone and then mirror that screen across there easily, simultaneously allowing me to access the storage on here. It is giving me everything that a docking station or a hub provides to me, but a much more smaller compact level. 
And for those that are worried about the storage and temperatures, because that's the main difference when it comes to storage for mobile devices, that the heat that M.2s can generate can be very problematic. Now, this arrives with that cooling system. It's also got a heat sink that directly feeds into that active fan there. The SSD inside, again, one, two, or four TB, depending, arrives with 162 layer 3D TLC NAND. That's B-I-C-S-6. And that gives enough performance of while still maintaining, because of the cap there, at 10 gigabit or one gigabyte per second. I Meaning it's not gonna overheat too much during typical operations. Now. First, we'll talk about the um, SSD itself during the testing. Uh, when I had it connected to a Windows system with AJA on a repeated 256 megabyte read and write test, I saw read performance at around eight to 900 megabytes per second sustained and around seven to 800 megabytes per second sustained right there. Keep in mind, again, that is a synthetic test there, and the transfer performance times are gonna be very dependent on the files you use, and of course, sequential data versus random IO. But what was interesting is I ran that AJA test for five minutes, and over those five minutes, I just repeatedly hammered the drive, and the temperature never went higher than 40 degrees, which is phenomenal for a mobile SSD in such a small casing, showing that that fan is really doing its job. Now, for that fan, let's talk thermals, let's talk noise. In terms of thermals, when I had the fan turned off, the SSD reached uh, temperatures of around 35 to 37 degrees. Again, you can sort of make out a little bit of my laptop in the recording there, which did skew the numbers briefly, but it was around 35 to 37 degrees. But during the sustained uh, sustained AJA testing there, I went ahead and had the fan set to the auto mode, which uh, starts at 7200 RPM that can be ramped up to in turbo at 10,000 RPM, and we saw it drop to 34 to 35 degrees dissipation on the outside. And again, we saw the internal SSD reading there on Crystal Disk Info never going higher than 40. And for those that are curious about the noise, obviously with the fan turned off, there was no noise because there's no moving parts on a device like this. But when we had the fan in operation during the AJA testing, I saw a noise level of between 42 to 43 dBA, which again, for such a compact fan, it's noticeable. I'm not gonna say it's, no, it's not noticeable, but it's not high. And crucially, the system arrives with not only a physical button for you to disable the SSD if you choose to, so you can reduce wear on the NAND, but more importantly, stop the drive being accessed easily, but you've also got a fan operation button there to turn it off or on, depending on your own operational environment, be it noise or because of temps. Now the retail kit, when you get hold of this device, it arrives with an instruction manual that details come with some of the setup and more. It also arrives with the magnet panels that allow you to attach it to, again, a mobile device, to a desktop device. It arrives with multiple, by the way, which means you can attach these to different devices where you think you're going to deploy this. It also arrives with a small, I think, faux, let's be realistic, faux leather casing there to carry the device in when you're not using it there. It's a little too thick, perhaps, to stick inside your wallet, again, uh, around 11 millimeters there, but still, excellent design here. I will say, the fact that you can't insert your own or upgrade your own SSD is gonna be disappointing, because it's not a full length 2280 length SSD inside there. It's either NAND chips directly onto a PCB inside that you can see with the other chips, or it's a smaller factor M.2 inside there. I'm reluctant to take this apart because I might do a follow-up video on this with regards to for performance in Mac OS is there. Uh, the other thing I'm worth highlighting there as well is there's no word on encryption, which I think is a, a kind of a missed opportunity here. And yes, you can get software encryption easily depending on your device, but still it would have been nice to see them integrate hardware encryption on something like this, but I appreciate that would include, uh, that would involve including another chip on the board for hardware encryption and maybe would have ramped that price up when they're not everyone's gonna take advantage of that. But just keep in mind that the data inside this is not going to be encrypted. But that's really it. For what they're trying to do, 
This is an impressive little gadget here. I'm not gonna say that this is gonna give you more if all you want is storage than just buying an external SSD. But I will say that if you're looking for portable multi-port inputs for a hub or a miniature docking station, or you want to enjoy multiple connections on a mobile device, there is little better than this in the market right now to give this level of compactability while still giving you a lot of scale out in terms of storage and connectivity there. Yes, you're gonna be heavily dependent on your OS. So for example, when I was connecting this to my mobile device, getting it to recognize a USB drive that I connected in in Android was slightly problematic. Some software allowed me to see both drives, some didn't. I wasn't able to test iOS in time for this recording. In Windows, I was able to see my multiple drives and as mentioned the HDMI output worked great whether I was using it on a desktop or using it with a mobile device into a traditional monitor all these were good but for what we're getting here I really really like it but just keep in mind this is a product for crowdfunding it's linked below if you want to take advantage of that but otherwise I'm sure it's going to hit traditional retail like the majority of Charges products eventually so what do you guys think? Hopefully there's a written review link below over on NAS Compares. Uh, as mentioned, there is a link to their crowdfunding page below. It is uh, affiliated, so if you do use that link and you do back this project, we do get a small commission. Again, you don't have to do it. You can just control T and open up your own tab if you like. It's just a way to ensure that videos like this remain sustainable. But it has to be said that the brand has had zero control over the contents of this video. They supplied the unit and they're seeing it at the same time you are right now. But thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.